بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس ان آر لاسٹ سیشن وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دی امپورٹنس آف دی کمیونٹی اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو موو ہیڈ اینڈ ٹاک اباؤٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ دا گورمنٹ ناؤ وین ایور وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا گورمنٹ دین دا گورمنٹ بیسکلی ہیز مینی پلرز اٹ ہیز دی ایگزیکٹو اٹ ہیز دا پارلیمنٹ اٹ ہیز دا جوڈیشری دین الائڈ پلرز وچ آر دا میڈیا دی سول سوسائٹی پرائمیرلی اینڈ اگین ادر مائنر ایلیمنٹس Uh, of stakeholdership also. Now, when we talk about the government, then usually uh, we think that the government is a regulator. No, the government is a facilitator. That is very important. So, when we look at the government as a regulator, then uh, we have uh, different uh, dimensions of thinking. And when we look at the government as a facilitator, then our interface and our action would be on a more positive scale. So, again, it becomes extremely important uh, that uh, we realize the role of government. Uh, the government plays a key role in the corporate governance by defining the legal environment and sometimes by directly influencing managerial decisions. So, all of this is very important and we in, in Pakistan basically see that the government plays a major role because it can clamp down uh, upon the community, uh, it can send people to jails and it can also uh, ensure that there is no lo law and order situation. Uh, we see that uh, in various uh, groups which are taking place and the fact that It plays a key role uh, because uh, mostly the politicians uh, and the bureaucracy are uh, catering to the needs of the government, but also getting their needs met uh, through the government. And therefore, uh, it directly is influencing managerial uh, decisions. Now, uh, the following expect aspects play a critical role. Uh, to write and then enforce contracts, this is uh, very important. Uh, it is, is, is basically manifested with the government. to oblige management to provide accurate and comprehensive information before the shareholders. And therefore, if there is no compliance, then the government would move in to ensure compliance, to vote on important issues, to enforce the obligations of the board of directors, to specify and have managerial incentive contracts enforced. So, all of these uh, would lead uh, to a better organization and also ensure that everything is ab about the board and nothing is being hidden uh, by the government whereby undue advantage could be taken and also tax breaks could also be taken. So, all of these things become very important in the contents of corporate governance and it's not a one-way channel. It actually has to be a two-way channel to ensure its efficacy and its effectiveness and also to create a better work environment uh, for everyone. That, that is very, very important in that role uh, of chaperoning and that role of uh, acting as a supra patron uh, is very important in the context uh, of uh, uh, the uh, bank and also of the government. and also uh, of the various stakeholders which are involved with one particular organization. Political and economy forces uh, that produce the laws, the enforcement mechanisms, the bankruptcy processes, and the ability of powerful managers to influence legislation will profoundly shape corporate governance. So again, what we see is, is that ladies and gentlemen, uh, the managers or uh, the management of an institution uh, carries a lot of cloud because uh, it can facilitate Uh, the process of voting, it can facilitate the process of elections and can also bankroll uh, and sponsor uh, different uh, economic activities or different social activities which would give an edge uh, to the particular person uh, contesting in election and that uh, would be unethical. At one stream, the government owns the firm so that the government is charged with monitoring managerial decisions and limiting the ability of managers to maximize private benefits at the cost of the society. At a least extreme level, governments Uh, regulate corporations. So, again, uh, what we see is that uh, the government can also, on the orders of the uh, court, uh, take complete control of a particular organization to see that uh, nothing wrong is done and that all of the stakeholders are given uh, their rights. So, all of these developments which have been taking place uh, ensure uh, a more participatory role, uh, a more softened role, uh, a role which uh, is not linked with professionalism but is basically a personal role. And all of that Uh, becomes extremely important and also the fact uh, that uh, the government should abstain from uh, a regulatory context and try to adopt a facilitatory context and do away with red tape and do away uh, with, uh, with uh, road barriers and uh, road bumps to ensure that uh, the flow of business of different corporations is done in a much better way. The government regulates the activities and asset allocation of corporations and may even ensure uh, corporate liabilities in the favored industries even in countries that traditionally tend to disavow such support. So, again, we see uh, that the government uh, becomes a regulator of assets and also of activities allocation, and that is very important to monitor 
because otherwise uh, there is a possibility of rights being infringed. The governments regulate to maximize social welfare, which it tends to promote uh, through organizations, limit adverse externalities and exploit positive ones, deal with the monopoly power and directly prohibit managers from undertaking socially adverse actions. So, again, uh, the, the government uh, can catalyze uh, good work, good opportunities uh, and also uh, good internships uh, to the, the corporations, uh, interns or MTOs, uh, which will lead to uh, better trained, more efficient, more effective, uh, youthful resource power at the disposal of the corporation and basically fine-tuned and trimmed uh, through the uh, UN uh, umbrella. So, all of that is very important and we have to ensure uh, that we remain within the ambit of social responsibility. The government bureaucrats are unlikely to induce managers to maximize firm value, rather the politicians frequently use state enterprises for personal gains. Uh, the evidence suggests that the public enterprises are extremely inefficient producers and they frequently disregard social objectives as evidenced by the finding that state enterprises are worse polluters uh, than the private firm. So, what we see is, is again that the government is also playing multiple roles, but it does have an overarching role. It does have a supreme role uh, because laws are formulated by them, but it is very important to understand what the law is about and how it is going to be implemented. Otherwise, uh, it will result uh, in a trust deficit and that is something that we uh, do not want because uh, we are trying to uh, improve upon the system uh, where the government in every country exercises a certain amount of control over organizations and operations of the organization and the government could use this to steer organizations towards the path of good governance and that is uh, extremely uh, important. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the role of government is very important. Uh, we basically call it the 3H uh, and uh, 1S model. We see the hand, the heart uh, and the head and in between uh, we have uh, a, a strategic unit uh, which ensures that it gives direction and also uh, tends to uh, bifurcate uh, the responsibilities of different stakeholders and different concerns to further provide an opportunity for the longevity of that particular cooperation. Thank you so much.